that he had to go out, put himself out there, and start talking to more people. So around this time, he was also, you know, in, he was also a roofer. It was passed down in his family, and he was just working some, you know, lower wage jobs, and knew that he had to change his financial situation if he wanted to provide a positive future for his family. Started looking into other income generation opportunities, and just like many of us, found Renatus. And he actually, unlike many people, he actually took the business very, very seriously. He plugged into the Renata system. He started watching his education, listening to his mentors, and applied the velocity banking to pay down his education debt. Eventually, used the leverage he he gained as a down payment on a duplex, living on one side, running out the other. Now we fast forward to today. Dane has done you know multiple million dollars in transactions. You know he's raised over five million dollars from investors to lend on various you know real estate. Um, and he's just grown his team. He's a pit team member. He's recognized as a key leader in the community. So I'd like to bring on the line, Mr. Dane Clark. So good morning, Dane. How are you today? Good morning, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Dane. Thank you for asking. Cool. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Good morning, everybody. I'm so uh, glad to be here today. I hope you're, I hope you're already making it a wonderful Wednesday. And uh, let's see, while I share my screen here, uh, I, I had a couple of things that, that have been on my mind that I really wanted to, really wanted to talk about today. And so um, I, hope, I hope that this, that this call, you know, because I, I, I know we have a bunch of people that jump on here, but uh, um, I'm not sure if, if we have a majority of new people or if we have a majority of, of maybe a little more seasoned people. But, but you know, what's funny is the, the thing that I've been thinking about, it, it, it was kind of funny because it didn't, even though I started having some, some success, my mindset didn't change my mindset didn't change yet from what from the thing that i want to talk about and so so all right my screen can you guys see me this okay already abby yep can see it okay sweet perfect so so here's the question the question that uh, somebody posed to me and and it's this are you are you successful because you believe in yourself or are you successful or sorry, or do you believe in yourself because you're successful? So I'm going to say that again. Are you successful because you believe in yourself or do you only believe in yourself because you are successful or becoming successful and and so quick quick little story if i rewind several you know several years i've only been doing this for for three years but but if, if you if i rewind back you know two two and a half maybe three years ago even after it was funny even after i had done a couple of deals and made tens of thousands of dollars that I put into my personal, I shouldn't say my personal, my, my me LLC bank account and, uh, and, and started, you know, achieving a, a few little, little successes. I still felt in, in my mind that I was not successful. It was so weird. I remember thinking like, Oh my gosh, I will, I will feel, I will, I will become this success when when i do this or when i do that or when i you know anything so I, in fact i had done a handful of deals and and even brought in a handful of students and made tens of thousands of dollars on both sides but yet in my mind i still didn't feel you know successful i still didn't believe in, in myself, it was so weird, um, it, you know, and almost like a, a mind or, or a, you know, it was eye opening. And I, and so I started asking myself, you know, back then I said, all right, so what, what does it take then if, you know, if, if hitting some goals and 
finally achieving something that I've been working towards that doesn't make me feel any more, you know, any better about myself or, or, you know, any of the above. It was weird. So, so today I want to, I want to have everybody on this call, you know, wherever you're at, ask yourself that, are you becoming successful because you believe in yourself? Or do you believe in yourself or will you believe in yourself only when you have success or when you achieve and start becoming successful? And, and I'm here to tell you that the belief is a personal thing. It does not matter what you go do. It does not matter what you achieve. If you don't, if you don't believe in yourself, Nothing is nothing's going to change that if, is what I'm trying to get out here. Okay. So, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about this belief. And it was crazy. So, you know, even you know, a couple more stories about this. So I took, uh, when I was, when I was newer, I took an EMT course, um, or, you know, other, other areas, uh, call them AMT. So EMT elevate marketing training or, I can't remember what the AMT stands for, but, but essentially it's a focus group where everybody, everybody gets together. They put down a few hundred dollars into the pot and say, if I don't complete my, if I don't complete this, this course or, or this, uh, this six week mastermind, then I don't get this money back. But if I do, if I graduate essentially and complete all my homework, then I'll get some of this money back. So it's, it's kind of a, a focus group where, where you put that money in to help keep yourself accountable, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I, I took uh, an EMT training early on and uh, Mr. Michael Huggins was teaching a lot of it. And some of the other leaders, I remember John O'Neill and Christian Sadler and, and uh, Adele Jensen were, were jumping on and, and or pitching in and, and stuff. But, but I remember, I remember just going through the four core beliefs and I want to talk about this today because this even this even correlates with for yourself as well as it's going to directly correlate with with how much money you make in your business does and it doesn't matter real estate marketing either way okay so four core beliefs if you if you don't already know these the first thing that I um that they that they talk about that you need to believe and if if you really want to make some money in this business and sorry i'm like pacing around so i'm gonna pick up my ipad so to keep on coming back every time i need to draw something all right so first first off renatus is the and i'm gonna try and, and just kind of shorthand it on the on the writing here is the best income opportunity in the country. Renatus is the best income opportunity in the country. And, and so, you know, early on, it's hard to believe that, especially if you haven't made any money, especially, especially if you haven't done that first deal, if you're still working towards that first deal, or in my case, towards that fourth, fifth, sixth deal, then you need to start believing in yourself. You need to start believing in what you're doing. You need to start believing in, in what you stand for, like what, basically how you make your money, okay? Start believing in that. So best income opportunity in the country. Number two, belief is everyone. How many of them? All of them. Everyone needs Renatus. Everyone needs Renatus. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, if, if you look at somebody like myself, when I was, you know, like Abby said, I was roofing when I started doing this. I had quit. I had quit Apple, got married, tried to, tried to start a career, got laid off on my job. And went back to the only thing I knew. And so I was roofing part-time because that's all I could find. 
and my wife was six months pregnant. And so I was not, I was not one of those people that you would say, yeah, Dane's going to be successful when he joins, you know, when he buys this. <laughs> yeah. I needed Renatus. I mean, it was clear that I was in a tough spot, not making a lot of money, living on like $2,000 a month, telling my wife that she could not buy groceries from the top shelf at, at the store that she had to buy from the bottom shelf because they're cheaper. And, and so, yeah, of course, somebody could look at me and say, yeah, they, this kid needs this. But it doesn't matter where people are. I, uh, I'm working with a gentleman. The, the dude's an oral surgeon. And, and, he has, uh, and he approached me and he said, Dane, I see what you're doing. I, I will follow you on social media. I, you know, I, I, I keep on seeing what you're doing. And I keep thinking to myself, dude, I make 20 grand a month consistently consistently make $20,000 a month. But here's the catch. If I'm not sitting in my chair, working on some person's mouth and fixing, you know, this or that or whatever, then I'm not making money. And so he, he, he went on to tell me that, again, I make, I make $20,000 a month and I spend $20,000 a month. I got nine kids, man. And, and I got all this debt. I got a nice big house. You know, I did all this, I did all the stuff that, that people in my, you know, the more money I made, the more money I just spent. And he was like, I, I, I got myself in a situation. I mean, this guy had less cash flow than, than probably myself when I started Renatus and, uh, and, ha and when I was, when was only making $2,000 a month. He spent every dime of that, of that $20,000 a month. And so the more we got talking, I'm just like, dude, this guy's name is Robert. I'm like, Robert, holy crap, man. You need Renata. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't tell people that early on, but that's what I tell myself in my mind. When I'm, when I'm talking to anybody, just in normal conversation, and they're telling me and I'm asking them questions about themselves, you know, whatever. In the back of my mind, it's so crazy. This, this belief pops into my mind. And, I, and this is how I tell myself. And I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. They say some things and then into my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, you need rheumatics. But you just don't know it yet. <laughs> and so Robert and I have been talking back and forth and I showed him, I, I showed him, hey, here's how I've been building my business. And, and I've been... Uh, I've been a part of this real estate community for a few years now and, and they helped me, you know, get my first few deals done with education and this community and, and, and I've been working it, man. And, and now I work four days a week and my wife and I travel about seven days a month and, and we'll, you know, we, all, we always have a, a long three day weekend, you know, things have been changing and, and, and it's crazy because Robert goes, he goes, Dane, I had to say this, but all the, all the medical debt and all the, all the stuff that I did to become who I am, to make the money that I am. He's like, it's weird because I spent all that money to get myself in the situation I'm in now. But what I really wanted was what you, what you have. And so anyway, everybody just believe this. Every single person needs Renatus one way or another, whether they need more time, whether, whether they need to save some money in taxes, whether they need some, uh, some more security in their life than just a single income from like a job. Everybody, everybody needs Renatus. So, so, and here's the thing, cause you can listen to me tell you this until I am blue in the face and I run out of air to, to tell you this, the hardest sale that you'll ever make is going to be yourself on these concepts that everybody needs Renatus. And, and even when you start your real estate business and you start going and you start making more money, you've got to have these same kind of beliefs about your real estate. If you're, if you're going to be a wholesaler or you're going to be a fix and flipper or you're going to own rentals or apartment complexes or whatever it is, 
you need to believe this when you sit down across somebody's table in their home and say, I'll buy your house. You got to believe that they need what you have to come in and buy their house, you know, paying cash or, or, you know, however you're going to do that. Okay. So belief, everyone needs us. Number three, it is their loss. Oh, no, no. That was number four. It is their loss if they say no. Oh. I'm going to use that one right now. It is their loss if they say no. I mean, think about that for a reason. I've, if you guys have heard my box training, um, where I talk, I talk about how every single person that you talk to is, every single person you talk to is going to fall into one of four boxes. And when you talk to people, let me talk about this really fast. When you talk to people, number one is when, when people have a relationship to real estate, some people want a very passive relationship to real estate. Some people want a very active approach an active relationship with real estate. Okay. So these, these would be people that just really just want to put money into real estate. These are the people that want to analyze deals and make offers and, and they want to put time into real estate and maybe use other people's money. You have people who ha are in survival mode that own property and need some, you know, they, they've got property. They need some help with something. And then you have the people that are straight up, not interested to or with or around or anything with real estate. Okay. So I'm not interested straight up. What I've noticed is when you get these people that, that do end up saying no. So this Robert guy that I was just telling you about, he actually is somebody that I reached out to years ago back when i was really new and i told him what i was doing and he said yeah dan that's nice that's fancy that's great man i'm i'm glad you're doing that um and and he's like you know i i think i could i think i could participate as a passive investor actually and you know i, I really want to put my money to work and so some of you may have heard the story uh but when i was new like that i mean i started getting excited i was like man like I, I think I got it. Like Robert, Robert, you know, he told me that he's interested in what I have. And, and so I was getting all excited, getting all excited. And I was telling him about real estate deals. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to work. I'm doing this. I mean, if I find a deal, then I could probably get you in and you could make like a double digit interest, just be in the bank. So you could be a passive, you know, you could be a passive, uh, have a passive relationship to real estate. And he, and he's like, yeah, that sounds great. So let me talk to my, let me talk to my financial planner. Uh oh, at that point, <laughs> you know, now it's like, oh crap, now I got to fight with financial planner and I got, I need to tell Robert the financial planner um, is, is only going to tell him things that's going to make him money. So obviously financial planner doesn't like me. And it's funny because Robert calls me back and he goes, Dane, he goes, Dane, I, I just got off the phone with my financial planner and guess what? He has this opportunity. It's so funny because he calls financial planner to tell him he has an opportunity to invest in real estate. And then he, and then financial planner on the phone call tells him, Oh, you want some opportunities? I got some opportunities, man. So, so he, Robert proceeds to tell me, he says, Dane, um, my financial planner has this opportunity. I bet you would actually be interested in, you know, screw your real estate stuff. Basically. I bet you'd be interested in this, this company. This is a startup company. They are going to take old used tires that are filling up our landfills and never decay and just sit there for, for, you know, year, eons of years. They're going to take these old used tires and they're going to melt them down and they're going to turn them into something useful. And he's like, yeah, the returns that they are promising or that they are projecting are astronomical. Like, it's way better than you. Oh, you offer me 10% back by real estate. And he goes, do you want to do this with me? Cause I'm going to go do this. 
And I was like, you know, at that point I was like, yeah, I'm in, your, I'm in your not interested box. No, that's not really what I want to do. I like real estate. And so he's like, okay, great. So he goes, he goes, his merry way. Robert called me back years later at this point, And he said this. So after that conversation and I, I placed him in this not interested box, Robert came back and he goes, he goes, Dane, are you, are you still doing that real estate thing? Are you still doing that real estate investing? And I go, yeah, I am. Why, why, why do you ask? And so he, you know, he starts, he proceeds to tell me, he's like, Dane, I actually, I got a crazy story, man. I lost my shirt. I've lost so much money on that stupid company. They this, they that, they did whatever. He's like, I lost, I, I am like licking my wounds. My bank account that I, that I use for the investing is licking its wounds. Like it is tiny now. And, and so I sat there and proceeded to tell him, I was like, well, dang, you know, that's that, that sucks, man. And then he starts asking me, so how's, how's it been for you? And I was like, I was almost like, ooh, I don't know, should I tell him? <laughs> but, but I was like, you know what? And this is step three. You are doing them a favor. Okay. The third belief, you are doing them a favor. Oops, favor. They're lost if they say no, but you're doing them a favor. You invite them. Yeah, and so I uh, I proceed to tell Robert because at this point I'm like, man, I was doing you a favor back then, and it was your loss that you said no to real estate because real if anybody ever says no to real estate, then they're gonna go their merry way. Life is going to slap them in the face a few times back and forth, and then they're gonna come back. I mean, I obviously didn't tell Robert that, but that's what my mindset was because I believe I believe that if I was doing him a favor back then. And it was his loss if he said no. And so I sat there and I, I, you know, as humbly as I could, sat there and told Robert. Actually, ask yourself this right now. If you were talking to Robert one year from today, maybe, or two years from today, or whatever, okay? Imagine that you achieved all the goals that you hoped for all the goals that you have set, what would you be telling Robert one year from today? Ask yourself that right now. And ask yourself, is that going to be fun? <laughs> okay. And so um, it was fun for me. I sat there and told Robert, I was like, oh man, like I actually been, then, you know, I've, I've, I've done like 30 some odd deals now. I, uh, I started my own bank. I, uh, I've got a bunch of rentals now. I got these, you know, all these different properties. And so, so and needless, needless to say though, Robert and I have started having that conversation where he's like, Dane, I need, you know, he didn't say Renata, but that's what I heard. He, he's basically said, Dane, I need Renata. And I said, yes, you do. Um, and so we're, I've been meeting with him. And I've been showing him some of the presentations and he's been coming down and he is so excited. Uh, I got a text from him just yesterday. He said, Dan, can you come to my home? I want you to meet with me and my wife because I need, I, I need to get the ball rolling on something like this. And so we're going to put an order in next week. Anyway, so back to these beliefs. Number one, best income opportunity in the country. Everybody needs this. And, and those two things. Like with Robert, it was his loss that he said no to me years ago when I was new. But boy, am I grateful. And I hope, and I hope that you, get, you grasp that concept, that boy, will you be grateful that you reached out to people to tell them that you're getting into real estate and that there's a potential opportunity to make some money together when you're new. Because there's that difference there. If people say no when you're new, even though you're doing them a favor, when people say no when you're new, they go into this not interested box that really turns into just a not interested yet box because life is going to slap them in the face 
back and forth a couple times and they're going to come back. And if you never burn that bridge, if somebody stays, if somebody says they're not interested right now, that's totally okay. Those people put, I, I have that special place in my heart for those people to go that is called my not interested box. And I say, cool, well, you're going to pay me interest in dividends when you uh, are, when you come back, <laughs> essentially. And so I say, go ahead, go ahead. You're going to go do whatever it is you want to do. You know, get out of my face right now because I'm looking for these people. Like, these are the ones that I'm going to make some money with today. I'll make money with you tomorrow. Um, so believe, believe in yourself. Believe in what you sell. Believe in what you stand for. You, I mean, Renatus, you can go to any community and you can hear some crazy cool stories. And it's your turn. It's your turn to become one of those stories. You know, it's your turn to get on some of these webinars and, and founders webinar and, and tell your story of your own rags to riches or why, why things sucked before. Um, all right. So I, I want to open up a couple of questions here. Let me actually check the chat really fast. Oh, thanks Pete. I wanted to tell that story first. But a couple of questions. I would love to hear from you guys. It looks like somebody's raising their hand. Billy Parton, are you uh, are you able to come off of mute? I think I can. I might be able to unmute you. All right. Can you hear me, Billy? Or are you raising your hand on accident, maybe? <laughs> Any questions that I can help you guys with? Whether it's belief or anything else. I wanna know, I wanna know how I can help this group. How many people we got here? We got 80 people on here. What is the next thing that you are trying to achieve? Come out and share. Hey Dane, how you doing? It's Brian Wright from Central Texas. Brian, what's up brother? Hey, I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? Good, man. So I'm at a point in my business where I feel like I'm gaining momentum and I wanted to know what it felt like for you back then at that time, because I'm on the path to make five star. Um, got in a vision board to make the leadership retreat this year. And I, like I said, I feel like I'm gaining momentum. Last night, I actually stepped in front of the room and, you know, did my presentation on the funding portion of our education, our Q&A follow up. And I was just trying to see what it was Good for man. you because I just I just got done with the EMT training and I remember you said you were a bit shy. Can you take us back to the time that uh -huh. you started to gain momentum um, and you overcame your shyness? Can you can you talk about that? Because that's something I experienced last night. Yes. Yeah, actually, that's awesome. So so oh, thank you so much for asking that. Um, I'm going to Chuck, I'll come back to you. Give me one sec. All right. So question was, oh, let me come back here. Question was how how did I overcome some of the things that I knew that I needed to? So one of those was, um, so if, if you know, if you know what is next for you to overcome, that's awesome. Cause a lot of times, a lot of times you got to sit and look for it. Okay. But, but so I'm going to, I'm going to use that example where you, you know that you need to overcome. Okay. You already know what that is. All you have to do, and I shouldn't say all you have to do, what you need to do is this. So for me, if I was shy, the best way to, to get out of shyness is to just face your fears. And that looks like, say, let's reword this here. Let's restructure that. All right, let's restructure that H. So if you're shy, then you just need to face your fear. And so here's what I did to face my fear. I, I pulled up my calendar. And in fact, here, let me pull up my calendar and I'll show you guys. I pulled up my calendar and I said, all right, if I am going to face my fear, I, I need to schedule myself to face my fear. And so if I go like years back, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if this is going to, I think, I think Apple actually deletes like events off of your calendar. So 
this probably isn't going to be the best way to show an example, but all right, let's go back to this. So if I am going to face my fear, I am going to schedule the times that I'm going to face my fear. And so I told myself that I needed to have at least two events in my calendar that I was going to face my fear at any given time. Why? Because if I only have one event, when I go and do that and speak in front of people or share a story or a testimonial, and that's how I started actually was just offering and saying like, Hey, you know, presenter in our local community, can I, can I give a testimonial like during your, your presentation? And so, and so I would schedule myself at least two because if I only did the one after I did that and it was scary, it was a little bit harder to, to schedule the next one. So I said, all right, I'll do it this day and this day, you know, two times in a, you know, two, two events. And cause that way, once the next event or once that event that is done, that first one, I already have the next one in the calendar. And so it's like, all right, well, the other one's already there. I better schedule the next one. And so I always, 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 always had two events scheduled in the calendar. But, and so that was the advice that I got. And then I told myself, you know what, I'm going to take this to the next level. I'm going to schedule the next 52 events that I am going to speak at um, and, and get out of face my fear of being shy and being afraid of being in front of people. And then I said, you know what? And I, I talked to Mr. Michael Huggins. And, uh, and so he said, all right, Dane, I'm going to, I'm going to take your 52. I'm going to raise you 104. So I scheduled out the next 104 events that I was going to face that fear in front of people. And to make this even more, um, uh, how do I, how, how would I even say this to make this even more, uh, legitimate or, or pressing for me to do it, I, I told other people or I committed, I committed to other people that I was going to do that. So I scheduled it out in my calendar, the next 104 events. And then I would tell people so that they were counting on me. It's so interesting. If, if there's something that you need to overcome. So this just, this is just going to represent anything that you need to overcome that you know, because obviously if you don't know, first you got to find it, then schedule it out and have somebody else rely on you that you, that you need to uh, essentially satisfy or, or help or whatever it is. Because that, I mean, that was what was drawing me. The days that I, the days that I would show up to even the things that I scheduled myself. I mean, oh my gosh, I, I, I could tell you some times that I was near tears sitting in my vehicle out in the parking lot, knowing that I was going to have to go in and, and speak and just almost in nearly, nearly in tears thinking like, oh my gosh, like I can't do this. This is so, you know, cause again, back to this belief stuff back to this belief in myself, belief that, that I'm here for the other people, um, scared me. But because I knew, and when I was sitting there in my, in my vehicle, almost bawling, <laughs> um, I knew that I had committed to other people and they were counting on me. And so I have, in the last couple of years, I've actually, I actually did this for two years running. In the last couple of years, I've done t over 200 plus events that I came and I spoke in front of a group of, of as small as 30 and as big as a thousand. And that, that helped me. It's crazy because now I absolutely love it. It's weird. Now it's like an addiction almost that I'm like, man, I got to share something with somebody. I got to inspire someone. So thank you so much for asking that. I hope hey, that Dave, helps. Yeah, it does help. That was that was a great example. Um, but do, do you do Toastmasters too, or have you ever done that? Or I did actually. Do I you did. recommend it? Do you highly recommend it? And I do. It's okay. a great 
it's a great way. It, it's a, it's a great way to schedule to, okay. to put that in your calendar and commit to the others as well. Absolutely. Uh, it, and it may actually make you money because if you, if you start talking to people about real estate in your Toastmasters, then I mean, heck, you'll, Absolutely. you'll, you'll kill two birds with one stone. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'll keep that golden nugget and thank you, sir. Cool. And I'd schedule like two, go to two different. If you know, if you want to really level up then go to two different ones, speak in your local community, go to a couple of different Toastmasters a week. So let's see, Chuck, where do you go to find out if they have watched the Renatus videos? I'm not sure exactly what, uh, who they are. Uh, so if you can clarify, let's see, Corey. How do you reach out to and ask for ask your blue collar family that are living paycheck to paycheck, saving in their 401k for retirement and counting on social security to fill in the gaps so they can live? How do you help them change their mindset and invest? They live in a rural area, no meetings or Renatus community within four hours. So Corey, let's see, good for the, it forces you to come in. Oh yeah. Corey, let's talk about that really fast and then uh, and then we'll jump off the call here. So how, how do you reach out to blue collar friends and family that are in rural areas, no Renatus live community events? So I actually just, I actually just signed up a student out in the uh, Tri-Cities area in, in Washington. No Renatus communities for hours of driving any, any way. And so, so a couple of things. I would, I mean, you, you're going to need to, to create your strategy of how you're going to do this. Yeah. So your strategy is going to be that they are going to have to, they're going to have to believe in themselves and this system from an online, from an online standpoint. So for example, as, as you go through, cause I, I always tell, I always tell people, people need a first exposure. People need a second exposure. They need a third exposure. They need, you know, so on and so forth. And so, what you're going to basically have to do is, is you're going to have to give them an online first exposure. You're going to have to give them an online second exposure, an online third exposure. And then when they join, they're going to have to have an online uh, support. And so you'll, you'll probably use a lot of uh, Zoom, just like we're doing right now. You'll be using Zoom to, to do your one-on-ones with them and show them. So what I would do is first exposure, I would, I would schedule a time to meet with them about something that, that piques their interest. And so something like, Hey, I just learned how you could pay your house off in like a third of the time. And if that piques their interest, they may be cool. I'll send you here's, here's what let's do this. I want to talk to you about this. Um, could you talk to me on Friday this week? Let's see. What's today? Wednesday? Yeah. Two days. Could you talk to me on Friday this week? I, I want to show you some, some stories and some examples of what I've seen this done, even if, if, especially if it was your own, then share that. And so I would schedule this second exposure and I'm going to be one-on-one -on, -one on zoom. And so, and that's after they created the intrigue. Okay. So schedule that, but then say, Oh, oh, oh before I meet with you on Friday, and this is important. Okay. So everybody that's listening to this and this is, might be valuable to you. This is very important probably the most important aspect of this. Okay. So I remember I created intrigue and they're like, yeah, yeah. I want to know more about that. You know, how to pay house off in, in a third of the time or, or buy a rental or, or learn how to find a hundred thousand dollar discount on a house. Okay. So just a couple of entry points. So you drop that and you say, cool, let's talk on Friday. Okay. Do you have time? Cool. Oh, 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 by the way, could you finish this video before we meet? It's about, you know, and depending on whatever video you, you get your hands on, some kind of a webinar, maybe a recording of, of your local community that's doing a first exposure, you know, wh whatever it is, ask around your local community and say, hey, does anybody have a, a first exposure webinar that explains the value of Renatus and tells them how much money it is at the same time? And, and so anyway, so remember that. The, this one comes first. You schedule the one-on-one -on -one via a Zoom then you pull it back and say, oh, 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 could you finish this video before we meet? It's like an hour and, you know, however long it is, hour and 40 minutes, hour, you know, hour and 30 minutes. 
45 minutes, you know, de depending on whatever one you're using. And so you ask them that, can you do that? Because if not, then maybe let's meet like Monday or Saturday or something like that. Okay. So get them to commit to watch that and then show up to the one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Now in this one-on-one, -on -one, this is either obviously going to have to be you, or if you are not a five-star, then get with your five star and see if they are on board to help you do this. Yeah, so you or your five star, either way, if your five star is not set up to do that, or if, you know, if, if, you, if you have more belief in yourself, then yeah, you do it. So Zoom, Zoom is free. If, if, uh, if it's only one-on-one, -on -one, Zoom is free. If you want, an, if you want another, uh, uh, opportunity to do this then uh, and there's an app called join.me also free um, if you do like three people on zoom then they limit to you I think I want to say they limit you to like 30 minutes 30 minute meetings or something like that so if it's just two people free join me it's free you can have up to three people for free um, but anyway so that's how it's going to work is Schedule that meeting after you created Intrigue. Then say, oh, before we meet, can you watch this video? Cool. And then you meet, and then you say, cool, let's meet again about this, you know, and, and then you basically just, if, if they are excited, then you say, yeah, let's put your order in, and then we're gonna have to find funding, so you schedule the next meeting. Oh, and before we meet, could you do this homework? You know, after you tell them like, oh, here's how most people funded. They use, you know, zero percent credit card. So basically, you're like, yeah, I started Lossy Banking about the same time to open up their education and, and start. And then, uh, or or people, you know, use their UG, their U, uh, not UGA. They use their 401k to fund it. They use a little bit of cash. You know, they use this. They use that. They they did IRA or no, you can't use IRA. Sorry. Um, they use their um, life insurance. They got a loan from family. They used UGA, you know, whatever it is. So, so whatever it is that you feel is going to be best, and you know, you kind of, you kind of walk them through it a little bit and, and ask them questions. And so, whatever they choose to, to create um, the funding, and you say, cool. So, let's let's meet again. But before we meet, could you do that? Could you uh, go down this uh, plan A of how how you feel like you could fund your education, and uh, and then we'll meet. And we'll talk about it okay and then and basically just go from there so i hope that helps and i hope that answers what your question was as well uh da, da, da. forces in here now part of this week homework is setting up a 10 minute velocity banking presentation i've got six people scheduled and i, I struggle a little with the presentation that i'll be doing on zoom any tips um, depends on what you're struggling with. Um, tips would basically just be like, you know, if I gave, if I were to give tips, get, uh, just create some bullet points of, of topics and a story. Make sure you tell a story. Absolutely. Um, so tips, bullet points, practice it, draw it out, um, draw it out a few times as you're practicing. That's what I used to do. When I was practicing to do like my follow up presentation was I would just I would do the presentation in my mind and sit there and draw. And that that would help me go like in order and it would help me keep my mind you know, focused for, you know, a good 45 minutes or so. Um, prospects that you give the AMP website to. I'm not sure what that means. Check. Uh, let's see. Is there a slide presentation for velocity banking? Um, let me think. There, I know, I know Mr. Michael Huggins has a, a video. So if you have access to him, ask him and say, hey, do you have a little, he, he, when I, I remember seeing a little nine minute uh, Facebook, or not Facebook, on YouTube um, that he would kind of share. Hey, Dane. Yo. Dane, hey, it's Billy. It's uh, interestreduction.com. 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 Yeah, okay, go there. It's, it's only a 13-minute video, so it's not like you're gonna train. Okay, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna learn 
quasi intriguing, but they, but wow, it's it's very intriguing. They'll absolutely, yeah. um, uh, they'll absolutely get the get the hook and want to know more. Interestreduction.com. Cool. Oh, sorry, I just uh, texted that privately to to Estrin. <laughs> so everybody else, interestreduction.com. Uh, let's see, I get email there's ever since I watched the intro, follow up and nothing for the line of page, a blast. So cool. Well thank you all. Um thank this you. was awesome spending this time together. Oh, really quick, look go ahead. Uh on that amp thing, Michael was showing a place where you can go like to it shows that all the information they've put in and that they've actually watched the video before you can go follow up. Oh yes. Yeah, and they actually just rolled that out this last um uh nationals. That's right. I, I forgot about that. So yeah, in your amp, basically, if I just go over here to Renatus um, and log in to the old business center and go to right here, AMP. If you have not already set this up, you're going to have to get an approval from corporate. I believe it's over here in the gearbox, maybe. Oh, come on. And then you will, oh man, where is that? Website, there it is. So I can't remember how I had to apply for this through Renatus. Um, but I bet if you clicked on one of these things, there's going to be something that says, Hey, request. And so you'll request that. And then you can, you can now send these links to people and it'll give you that feedback. So I found that through going through the amp and then over here on the side of whatever button it was that they were asking me to apply or, or request my own little links through Renatus. Um, and then they created these links for me that you can be sending to people and then they'll track that, that their progress and stuff like that. So awesome. Thank you, Chuck. All right. So we're going to go and jump off. Thank you all. Make it a wonderful Wednesday for yourself and I'll see you guys next week.